Hi, my name is Aaron Marcus, and here is the first video that I promised to send. This is a great uh, video that's, that's going to have really important information that will teach you how to put together a great headshot and also commercial photos. So let's get started talking about headshots first. Uh, just some of the basic ground rules. Every headshot is going to be 8x10. Uh, there shouldn't be any exception to this rule. Your resume will be 8x10, uh, so make sure it's not sticking out um, through the uh, over the back of the headshot. Also, uh, today everybody's using color. Years ago, people uh, used to use black and white, but um, uh, it's been quite a few years since, since that happened. It, it might change at some point, but uh, everybody's using color now. Here's the key thing to learn and that uh, you really need to understand about headshots. The headshot needs to capture your personality. And when I say your personality, I'm not necessarily meaning who you are as a human being. It's the way people perceive you. It's the personality uh, that people uh, feel uh, about you when they meet you. It's the kind of character that you portray that immediately allows people to put you into uh, a certain category so that you can be cast in, in a very specific role. So, like for instance, you're looking at me right now and you're not going to be thinking of um, you know, the, the head of a motorcycle gang. You know, you're probably going to be thinking, I would be cast as, you know, a doctor, um, a lawyer, the uh, science teacher, uh, I could be the history teacher, uh, the psychologist, somebody you will share information with, somebody you're comfortable with, somebody who seems kind, somebody who seems successful, uh, maybe a, a politician. Uh, those are generally the kinds of roles that I go after and that I book. And that's not to say that, that periodically I might get something that's way off type, but, th but those are unusual. So what you need to do before you even think about putting together a headshot is understanding and figure out how will people submit you for jobs? What kinds of roles are you realistically going to get? And then create a headshot that makes that statement. So for me, what I decided to do was create a headshot that shows warmth, friendliness, somebody that you like, somebody that you trust, somebody who's successful. Those are all the elements that you will see in my headshot. And the other key factor is you can't just put together a headshot with a nice smile. You have to be thinking during the photo session. You've got to be thinking about the character because when you are thinking and your brain is working, there's a energy that will shoot out of your eyes that will simply captivate people. It will grab people's attention and that's exactly what you want to have happen. So let me show you the first slide here. And as you can see, you want to be capturing the personality so that others clearly see how you should be cast. Let me show you a headshot. And as you can see here in my headshot, there are some other key factors, along with the life in the eyes. There's real emotion. There's believability. It's not a plastic kind of smile. The other thing as well is there's nothing distracting in my photo that's grabbing people away from looking at me. Sometimes people wear really interesting shirts, uh, a really interesting blouse, uh, earrings, necklaces, jewelry, you know, all kinds of things, an interesting background. Get rid of all that because what you need to do is have people look at you. There's nobody who's going to look at my headshot and say, wow, I love that sports coat, love that sweater, uh, you know, love the shirt. Everything is basically helping to emphasize what I am in this picture. And so, you know, basically it's like nice wallpaper where it enhances the image, but nobody is staring at it. So those are the key elements in your headshot. Figure out how you're going to be cast. Make sure that your emotions are happening so that there's life in your eyes. And the third key component is 
make sure there's nothing distracting people from looking at you. If you would like, you can get an opportunity to see other people's web uh, other people's headshots by going to this website reproductions.com they are a really good printing company it's a pretty high-end company they're based in new york and if you put in uh, your zip code they will ask for that on the um, on the home page and then it will take you to either east coast or west coast headshot photographers and these are photographers who've paid a fee to be on the site and they show their work and not to say that everybody there is is phenomenal it's not to say that every headshot works there but it will give you some really good ideas as to what kinds of headshots people are looking for and especially if you find some um, actors in your category you know study their headshots and see if you can learn something from what they're doing how to create really strong commercial photos. Now you're going to be using commercial photos for commercial modeling work, typically on a composite sheet. And just so that you know, a composite sheet, they are also called comp cards or Z cards. Uh, it's all the same thing. Typically, uh, you will have a headshot on the front and maybe four photos on the back uh, with your statistics and your information, you know, contact information or your agents, depending on what situation you're in. The trick to putting together great commercial photos are, number one, make the photos look like ads. Don't just pose for the camera. Don't just stand there and smile and, and hold a product uh, in your hand. Make it look like an ad for an actual product. And the other thing, too, is you want to show a wide variety of expressions and emotions uh, in your composite sheet. So if you can, try to have four different types of emotions in your composite sheet. So the key thing, and this is part of your homework assignment, figure out your type. Just like, you know, when you're putting together a headshot, be realistic. How are people going to cast you? And those are the kinds of shots you want to create. The other, th the other thing that you can do as well to help give you some clue as to how people view you number one you can ask people in the in the industry and if you're not that familiar with with people whether it's photographers or agents or people at advertising agencies start going through magazines non-fashion magazines go to a bookstore and you will find tons of magazines with ads in there that you could potentially appear in so just start looking at lots of ads and when you see an ad in there that you can honestly say that's a shot that i can do Make a copy of it and use that as your blueprint for your next photo session. Let the professionals help guide and teach you how to put together a great photo. The other way to get some ideas is to go to some stock photography websites. Stock photographers, basically what they do is they create really interesting shots that look like ads and they have to be generic enough so that these photos can be rented out to advertising agencies or directly to companies or people who need a stock shot. It's cheaper for um, companies to rent an existing stock shot than to hire a model, um, hire a makeup artist, hire a photographer, and pay them for you know, a full day shoot. So what they do is they rent a stock shot. And there's a whole other discussion that I can get in with you at some other point uh, as to whether it's a good idea to actually be in a stock shot. But for this particular exercise, what I'm suggesting is go to some stock photography websites and you can do a search in your category. So if you are a high school student and you are athletic, let's say you're a gymnast, you can go to, and I listed a couple of websites here that you can check out. There's Getty Images, there's Photosearch.com. And if you are a gymnast, type in gymnast, and you will find a lot of stock shots with gymnasts. Uh, if you are um, you know, a woman in her 40s and you think you should be doing an ad as a real estate agent or you're the realtor, then do a search. And once again, you will find some really good shots to use as guides for you. Now, some of the shots in, in, on the stock websites will only work if there are words in there, if there are products, if there's a headline. What you want to do is to find some stock shots 
that look like ads even without any of the words. As another part of your homework assignment in preparation to putting together some commercial shots, after you've gone through lots of uh, magazines uh, and or the stock websites and you found, let's say, 10 or 12 different ideas, then make a list of the different emotions that you need to bring uh, to the actual shoot itself. So if there's a photo that you're thinking would be a great idea where you feel sick and it's a pharmaceutical ad, then what you have to do is think of a time period where you actually felt miserable really feel it, really experience it, and think of a word or two words or sometimes it can just be a sound that will help you remember that experience and feel it again and then bring it to the camera. So what I do is this. Whenever I'm doing a photo shoot, I always look away from the camera. I will say a word or two very softly to myself down here, bring the look up, boom, there's the shot. I will do the same thing down here. And it's like a little dance that takes place. It's I call it the Aaron Recall Method because it's something that I created. Where I look away, say a word or two, make a sound, and bring it back up. And that's how you continuously recharge uh, your, your emotions so you don't look like a model, so you're not just stuck, you know, kind of staring into the lens of the camera. And so to help you with this, when you're looking at a lot of these ads or stock shots that you're considering using, look at the emotions, make a list of all the different emotions that you need. Then make it, make it very specific. So if there's a category where you put sick, well, there's a lot of different kinds of sickness. Do you feel like, well, you got a cold, um, you know, it's, it's not horrible, you just don't feel 100%. Do you feel like you are just wiped out and you've got stomach ailments and you can't get out of bed? Or whatever it is, make it very specific. So that way, when you are, you know, on a set and you are being told, okay, well, you've got to look sick, then you can ask, um, you know, what kind of sick are you talking about? Then you can really pull it off and make it a very, very believable and very specific kind of look. So you're going to practice creating the right emotions and expressions. And what you can do is before, uh, let's say you're going to create some new commercial shots, you know, for your portfolio or, you know, your website or your agent's website or comp card, practice by just getting anybody to take, um, use their cell phone, you know, look away, say a word or two, you know, I feel horrible look up like this, you know, whatever it is, and, you know, do five, six, seven, eight shots and take a look at it and see if they look believable. If they look believable, you've got it. And you know how to recreate all of those different looks whenever you need it. So that way, if you're in a situation, you're just not feeling it that day, you've got a technique to fall back on. So, for the recall method, just one more time, you're going to look away from the camera, you're going to say a word or two to create the right emotion, and then look back up in character. And that's how you get a really, really strong, powerful looks that are believable. And let me just tell you, there are two times you don't want to use this technique. If for some reason the photographer says, I don't want to hear anything, I, I don't really understand it, sometimes they do, or if you're working with another actor or model who just isn't capable of working this way and they're just saying silly things that are that's just throwing you off, then what you do is you stop and you do, it's called an internal monologue, where you think the words to yourself. So let me start showing you some examples of real ads that I've done where I use this emotion. And I'm going to zip through them pretty quickly, but as you can see in here, you will see lots of different expressions and emotions. There's different kinds of frustration. Some are over the top, some are more serious, some are more angry. There's different kinds of sick, like I mentioned before. Uh, there's confidence. Uh, there's another kind of frustration. Really quickly, so I'm throwing Johnny Depp out of the courtroom in the movie Cry Baby. And I am to his right. You can see me on the left of the screen here. And they use glycerin to create the tears. It's like clear syrup and you can place it right here. It will stay right there. It won't move. It was great for the movie. But the reason why I'm mentioning this to you here is 
don't use it if you're doing some kind of athletic shot and you need to show perspiration. Some people have tried to do that and they'll place little beads of glycerin all over their face. The, the problem is if you accidentally get it in your eyes, it's going to be horrible. It's going to burn your eyes. So if you're doing an athletic shot or you need to show perspiration, either run around and really perspire or get somebody to spray you with some warm water. That's a much, much better and safer way to do it. Once again, very different kind of look. Uh, that's a very different kind of look. Uh, yeah, it's always kind of weird to see that one. How women have long fingernails, I don't know. I always poke my eyes out. I broke a nail once opening up a door during the shoot. Um, Molson Beer. I'm the Rock Runge guitarist for Molson Beer. And once again, you look at me, you don't necessarily think of Rock Runge guitarist, but with the right wig, uh, the right emotions. I had music playing in the background. I asked the photographer if we could do that, and he knew that I would be able to pull it off. Uh, this is this was really cool. Disney World, and uh, you know the whole idea is be a kid again. You travel to Disney World, you know, with young kids as a family. Now they're older. Leave them at home and come down and experience it again. So they needed somebody who could let loose, somebody who could scream. And you'll notice in the next slide, if you look at this one very carefully, that's how I booked this job. They really uh, they saw the shot from Disney World and they said, "Hey, well, I'm sure that you can do this lottery thing, uh, the Virginia Lottery. You win, you know, you win a quarter of a million dollars. I need to see that excitement." And so uh, that's another reason for showing this technique. If you're asked to show an experience that or an emotion that you've never experienced, then what you do is think of another experience that will give you the same kind of emotion. So since I never experienced winning a quarter of a million dollars. Uh, I thought about when I play baseball, hit a grand slam, we win the game in an all-star game. And that's my feeling of hitting home plate with everybody jumping all over me. That was pretty cool. Another kind of pharmaceutical ad. Uh, this was shot in New York. And, um, you know, it's a very, very different kind of look. So this really sums everything up. This is a Pennsylvania lottery. It's only a $1,000 uh, Valentine's Day special lottery ad. And you give her chocolates, that's what you get. Flowers, that's what you get. But man, when you give her the lottery ticket on Valentine's Day, watch out. Okay, so here's just to kind of sum things up for you, how to create really strong uh, commercial photos for your composite sheet. Number one, make sure that your photos look like ads. You can bring props. Uh, just make sure you're not using any logos or brand names. Uh, if you can shoot on location, if the photographer is willing to do that, that would be great. If not, then you figure out what shots you can do in the studio. And the other thing is show a wide variety of expressions and emotions. So what I did in here was uh, I went through some magazines uh, just to show you how you can go about doing this. And this is a great idea. Um, this could be an ad for a lot of different things, um, but you know, nobody's mugging the camera. Uh, you feel this great relationship between uh, you know, mom and her son. She's a businesswoman. She's picking up her child from you know, daycare. Uh, it's a really nice shot. Very, very sweet photo. Um, I like this one too. I'm not it's crazy about the expression, but I love the concept, and this is something that a lot of you can do, and this shot would work even if you didn't have, you know, the product, if you didn't have the, um, all the words, it's called copy, or, you know, the headlines in there, but that's something that you can do also. It's a nice doctor shot. Here's a good example of an idea that I had from looking at some magazines. And I was thinking this was for life insurance. You know, maybe for the times you aren't going to be there. And I was presenting myself uh, as a business person and also as a dad. And so I combined both of those ideas and that's what you want to do. Once again, going back to one of the first things that I said, figure out how you're going to be booked, what kinds of characters, roles are right for you, and then create them. Bang people over the head with the idea. This is a wonderful shot. This is another pharmaceutical shot. You can do this as well. And so just keep in mind, everything doesn't have to be beautiful. Um, you know, there are a lot of photos out there, a lot of ads where people look hurt, they look sick. So I'm not saying have an entire composite sheet filled with sick shots, but definitely, you know, consider having one of them. And if you do have, a, you know, a really strong, beautiful look, it will make those shots look even stronger. Really nice relationship shot, even though this does, you know, it has the uh, all the words in there. This could be an ad for a lot of things as well.
This also is a really good shot. Uh, this could be anything from tutoring. Uh, it could be something for a special school. It happens to be for a jewelry company, but uh, it's a really, really good ad. Uh, another, uh, you know, kind of pharmaceutical shot for Band-Aids. This is just perfect. Forget about um, the, the uh, headline. Forget about the product at the bottom. Just look at the photo itself. This is something that many of you could do. The prop in this shot is the greasy plate. Uh, this is a business person. He's got stomach problems. I like the expression very much. This is a really good example of a strong commercial photo. So anyhow, this was uh, the very end. I just wanted to get this information to you um, without having the, the knowledge of putting together a great headshot and if you're interested in commercial modeling work a great comp card it's very difficult to get work in the industry it's also hard to get an agent to represent you you need these materials they are crucial for you and the other thing to keep in mind is they're always changing you know it's not like you do a headshot and a comp card and that's it for the rest of your life um, I can't even tell you how many different headshots and comp cards I've put together over uh, my nearly 30 years uh, as a full-time actor and a commercial model. So uh, take your time with it, enjoy it, enjoy the process, test out ideas. And uh, the very last thing I just wanted to say, uh, it's difficult uh, in this business. It can be hard. You know, there are some people that don't like giving out information. Um, I do. Um, I just decided many years ago that uh, if I could, um, if I, you know, had success, I was able to stay in, in the industry for a long time period. Um, I like to be a mentor for people. I like to help people out. So here's all of my contact information. And feel free to get in touch with me. If you have any questions at all, um, just make sure that in the subject line you put, uh, you know, you opted in. Um, and you're on my mailing list or something so it identifies you so that way I can prioritize things and I will get back in touch with you uh, as quickly as I possibly can. So anyhow, um, I'm really uh, glad that uh, we are now hanging out together here and I will be sending you additional information for a long time. And uh, just to say goodbye, I'm Aaron Marcus and I really look forward to talking with you again soon.